Today's video will be talking about the regulation of the cardiovascular system. So we're going to talk about how certain substances which are produced by the endothelial cells of the vessels, how they affect the flow of blood. So the endothelial cells are located in this region here. This is the lumen of the vessel. This is most likely to be a arteriole. So here's the lumen and here are the endothelial cells which will be in contact with blood. So the redirection of blood is very very important because some tissues in the body may be more active than others depending on the circumstances. So this redirection of blood is very important to allow the oxygen and nutrients to pass to the more active regions of the body which require it. So it's done by altering the cardiac output, so the amount of blood which is extruded from the heart. Also changing the diameter of the arterioles has an effect on blood flow and altering the amount and altering the amount of blood which is pulled in the veins also has an effect. So we're gonna talk about the endothelial endothelium secretions so as I've just mentioned here are the endothelial cells they regulate the vascular function and they respond to changes in blood flow certain circulating substances and inflammatory mediators we're going to talk about their response with blood flow in this video and we're going to talk about three substances which they release so the first one is prostaglandins and thromboxanes. Well, thromboxanes aren't actually produced by the endothelial cells, but we're more going to focus on prostaglandins and we'll relate it to thromboxanes. So prostaglandins, it's a group of substances. Uh, prostacycline is one of them, and it's produced by the endothelial cells from arachidonic acid. Here is a diagram of prostacycline. Uh, prostacycline promotes vasodilation, so the opening out of uh, the blood vessel or the relaxation of the smooth muscle. Thromboxane A2 is produced by platelets from arachidonic acid as well, but thromboxane A2, it causes platelets to clump together. So this is usually what happens when there's a damage or a tear to the blood vessel wall. So thromboxane A2 is what causes the platelets to stick together. So a balance between prostacycline and thromboxane 2 is an ideal situation. It favours local vasoconstriction and clot formation when we have some form of injury to the vessel and it helps to keep the clot in place and it stops it from uh, going elsewhere and it helps to maintain normal blood flow. So this is prostacycline here, thromboxane A2. Now we're going to talk about nitric oxide and it's produced from arginine in a reaction which is catalyzed by an enzyme called nitric nitric oxide synthase, not nitric, so that's a mistake, nitric oxide synthase. So here is what nitric oxide looks like. This 115 p.m. is the length between the two bonds. It's not really important, but I just kept it in. So it's produced by this arginine, and it's catalyzed by nitric oxide synthase. We have three types of this enzyme nitric oxide synthase, number one, number two, and number three. You'll find number one mostly in the nervous system, number two in the immune cells, number three in the endothelial cells. So this is what we want to focus on here, NOS3. So it's activated by substances which cause an increase in the intracellular calcium ions. So the amount of calcium inside the cell, things like acetylcholine and bradykinin, which are neurotransmitters, um, so those increase the intracellular calcium ions and therefore they activate nitric oxide synthase 3. So nitric oxide itself is what causes vasodilation and it's formed in the endothelial cells. And once they're in the endothelial cells, they diffuse out into the smooth muscle. I don't know if you can see it. Here is the smooth muscle. So they'll diffuse out of the endothelial cells into the smooth muscle here. And it causes the activation of guanylyl cyclase. And then that produces cyclic guanosine monophosphate or CGMP, cyclic GMP. And it's cyclic GMP which causes the relaxation of vascular smooth muscle. We therefore have vasodilation and this can alter the direction of blood flow either to the extremities or to other regions of the body. So nitric oxide is a major local regulator of blood flow and in fact there was an experiment which was done where different forms of arginine which actually inhibited nitric oxide synthase were infused into the blood 
and what was found was blood pressure actually increased. So it suggested that nitric oxide synthase is a chronic regulator of blood pressure. So that's one way nitric oxide, just to summarize, affects the blood flow. Now let's talk about the last thing we have here called endothelins. So there's three types of endothelins. And these endothelins are the most potent vasoconstrictors. So there's three types, ET1, ET2, ET3. ET obviously stands for endothelin. So they contain 21 amino acid residues and two disulfide bonds. They are formed from larger prohormones via an enzyme or enzymes, endothelin converting enzymes. ET1 is the one which is most widely expressed. It's found in vascular endothelial cells, vascular smooth muscle, macrophages, myocardiocytes, fibro fibroblasts, brain neurons, etc. ET2 is found mostly in intestinal epithelial cells and ovarian cells, and ET3 is found only in vascular endothelial cells and intestinal epithelial cells. So how this mechanism of the vasoconstriction works is we have two G protein couple receptors which cause the endothelin effects. So we have endothelin A and endothelin B. Endothelin A has the most attraction or affinity for ET1 and endothelin B has an equal affinity for all three forms of endothelin. So vascular smooth muscle cells have both endothelin endothelin receptors so it has a and b and once they're activated we have a vasoconstrictive effect however the endothelial cells express only endothelin b receptors so while the smooth muscle here expresses um, both endothelin receptors the endothelial cells express only endothelin b receptor which stimulates endothelial nitric oxide synthase which leads to nitric oxide dependent smooth muscle relaxation which leads to vasodilation and as we've mentioned previously affects the direction of blood flow.